I think the biggest thing is that we need to have the conversation and that we need to pull it out of the shadows. You guys, I mean, I'm a postmenopausal woman. If you would have asked me when I was 35, if I wanted to be postmenopausal, I would have been like, hell no. You know, that there's just a scary, it's not just a scary time where you think your body's declining. And I want you to know your body is not declining. It is freeing up energies to do so many big things. But we live in a society that does not support that transition. We live in a society that does not support it through our food industry, um, our medical industry. I mean, if I go into the doctor and I start complaining about I'm going to kill my husband today, <laughs> you know, they're going to they're going to they're going to prescribe me some psychiatric psychiatric care. Right. I just need somebody to look at me and go, me too. You must be a perimenopause, you know, just to be able to open up that conversation. So we do not live in a society that supports it. There's a lot of embarrassment around it. There's a lot of derogatory terms around, you know, the postmenopausal woman, the perimenopausal woman. And we tend to like glorify this whole, you know, my child making years. And you know what? No, this is going to be a really great time. And so we need to have the conversation, grab the books that I recommended, um, do your own research, raise your hand. I, I was sitting at a table with dinner. This was, la this was last summer and there were eight of us at dinner and the woman across from me started sweating profusely and she started doing this and, you know, she was fanning herself and sweat was, and I knew she was having a hot flash because I have them all the time. I knew exactly what it was, but, and I wanted to reach out and say, Hey, having a hot flash, do you want to borrow my little fan? I keep it in my purse, but I was so afraid that to embarrass embarrass her to call attention to it because you could tell that she didn't want anybody to know that's what was going on. Well, I'm sitting across from her having one myself. So I'm like, girl, I know exactly what you're going through, but I want us to be okay having these conversations because the more we talk about it, the more we bring it into the light. And then the more it gets moved into the category of, of importance in our food culture, in our medical culture, that's another thing. Did you know that less than 1% of all the dollars spent on medical research is for this time in a woman's life? Less than 1% of what all statistic. the medical research dollars goes towards studying perimenopause and menopause this time in a woman's life. No yeah, wonder. Yeah. Your, your doctor gets anywhere from one to two hours of menopause, perimenopause training in an eight year education. It's just not in the forefront. So we as women need to bring it into the forefront. And I'm so glad we had this conversation tonight. And I'm sure that we'll have more conversations, but do your research, reach out to your friends. Cause trust me, if you've got friends that they're all having symptoms, it just doesn't look like it. If you're not having a hot flash, you think you're not going through menopause. Well, if you've got frozen shoulder or weight gain or brain fog or anxiety, go back to that list that I read at the beginning of the podcast. There's so much going on there and there's ways that you can combat that. Get your books, do your research and reach out and connect with each other. Courtney, what else do we want to say before we wrap up? I want to say that this just isn't a conversation amongst women. We need to be talking to others about it. So they are aware. I absolutely love that. I've been married 30 years. And I had said to my husband the other day, I, I said, I forgot what it was. And I, I was saying to somebody on the phone, blah, 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 menopause, blah, 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 hot flashes, sleep disturbances. I don't know what it was. And I, it, I guess it sounded like I was putting myself down. And I said, no, I'm no longer hiding the fact that I'm going through this because I want somebody else to know that they're going through it too. But you know what? I don't share a lot with my husband. I mean, I'm a health coach. I, you know, I don't sit down and say, babe, this is what's going on. This is why it's different in the bedroom. You know what I mean? Like that's a cringy conversation to have, right? Nobody wants to have that conversation. But I think when you have that conversation, it allows you to be vulnerable. And when you do that, you create a connection. And again, that's that whole cycle of support and love. So I agree with you, Courtney. Yeah, and also, 
And also, you know, children who are of an age to understand that, like mom is going through this, auntie's going through this, you know, this, this is why. And, and that way, you know, our younger generation isn't shocked and they have more, uh, a, a greater understanding of, you know, when they eventually get there or if one of their friends is going through it before they are or their spouse, you know, family member. I, I think if the conversation it, it's, needs to be more broad than just among women. Oh, I couldn't agree more because like you said, then the surprise that occurs when you don't know what's going on because you haven't had those conversations. And you guys, perimenopause can start as early as age 35. Don't be scared about that. Embrace that and be like, wow, now that I know, you know, that I'm going through this, by the way, there's no specific test that you can do for perimenopause. It was through all the research that I did. You can go get your hormones checked, but your perimenopause journey, which is seven to 10 years before your last cycle, fluctuates so much with your hormones that if you were to check your hormones today, you would get a different reading tomorrow and a different reading next week. And so there's not a specific medical test that you can do for perimenopause. Perimenopause is going to be based on symptoms. And in the books that I've recommended, and if you go to their websites, each one of of these particular authors have you know, a symptoms list to help people understand. Ah, okay. This is, I am in perimenopause and and because I've been perimenopause and I'm having these fluctuations, these are the things that I really need to look to, um, you know, to make sure that I have a healthy transition into menopause. Um, Oh, that was the other thing we talked about, you know, stress reduction, make sure that that's, you know, something that's on your list. But I agree with you, Courtney. I think the more we have these conversations, not just with women of our age, but throughout our entire community, we take the stigma away from it. Exactly. Completely. 